believe it or not, just upriver from the USS Kidd is a clear and present danger, a submarine. My name is Tim Nesmith, and this is Kidd Keynotes. Hi, Tim. Nice to see you. Good to uh, see you. If you would, introduce yourself to the viewers, please. Absolutely. I'm Annie Mahoney. I'm the curator at Capitol Park Museum. I'm a Louisiana public historian, and I love talking about artifacts. And that's actually why we're here today. We called ahead. We didn't just show up. <laughs> uh, but you've got an artifact in your collection that has kind of a naval bent to it, and we'd like to learn a little bit more about it. Well, I'd love to tell you about it. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So Andy, what are we looking at here? What have you got? Well, we are looking at a mid-1860s, 19-foot long, 6-foot deep, 3-foot wide, iron submersible ship. A submersible? Yes. Okay. Uh, early prototype of the submarines. Um, this one was found in 1870s in Bayou St. John, um, and it has had many homes since then. Okay. And Bayou St. John is down in New Orleans? Near New Orleans. Okay. <laughs> You said three feet wide? Yes, so very few people would have manned this ship. Two to three men, perhaps, from the inside. That's how wide it is on the inside. Um, two men would have operated a hand crank that would have worked the propeller, the fins. Um, they would have had a torpedo or a mine, an early torpedo mine, that would have either been put on a spar and rammed into ships from under seven feet under the water, not very deep, not diving very deep, um, or they would have floated a mine above it and then passed it to a ship as they passed under it to, it was basically a, a stealth weapon during the Civil War. That's amazing. And I'm familiar with the, uh, the H.L. Hunley, which they've got in Charleston, uh, but this well, when this was excavated impressive. in 1878, they thought it was the Pioneer, which was built by three famous submarine engineers in the Civil War. Um, but it wasn't until the 1960s that they discovered that that was not the Pioneer because of some drawings they found. Pioneer. Of the Pioneer. Hold that thought. We need to make a trip. Let's go. Hey, Jenny. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. If you would, explain to our viewers who you are and who you're with, please. My name is Jenny Dyer, and I'm the Education Director here at the Maritime Museum, Louisiana. And I'm going to go for a plug right now, and one of my board members with the Louisiana Association of Museums. I am. I'm a vice president. There you Second go. Second vice president. There you go. Uh, you're taking over. I'm getting out. <laughs> I understand from, uh, from Annie at the Capitol Park Museum that you have a replica of an old Civil War submarine. We sure do. It's called the Pioneer. Would you like to go see it? Absolutely, please. You can just follow me right this way. Okay. So, Tim, what we did here to house the Pioneer, and it is a replica of the Pioneer, uh, we rebuilt the Leeds Foundry office, which is located in New Orleans. Oh, wow. And this was the location where they produced the iron that helped build the Pioneer submarine. If you look up here, you can see yeah. uh, the wrought iron balconies and the New Orleans facades that we're so familiar with. And the old brick paved streets and the, and the shells and, and the all shells that. And them, yes. And here's our Pioneer. Fantastic. So look at this thing. She is a beauty. Uh, the question comes up. What was the Pioneer? Why was the Pioneer built? Well, the Pioneer was a 
not truly a Confederate submarine, but a privately built submarine. And it was going to be a privateer, not part of the Confederate Navy. They actually got a letter of mark, which is a letter from the government saying you can go and prey on merchant shipping. The reason the Pioneer was built was because in 1861, April of 1861, the Union Navy began a blockade of southern ports, and New Orleans was one of the first ports to be blockaded. The mouth of the Mississippi was shut down to civilian traffic by the USS Brooklyn, and you're not getting supplies coming in from foreign ports as easily. It becomes more of a problem, so they need to get rid of this Union ship, and their solution was what was known at that point in time as an infernal machine, a submarine. Okay, so full disclosure, this isn't the real Pioneer. This is an interactive replica that was built by students in the industrial department at the Southeastern Louisiana University in Hammond, Louisiana, near uh, the Maritime Museum of Louisiana, at which we're at now. This Unlike many exhibits, most exhibits, artifacts and museums, this one is a replica and you're allowed to touch it. You're allowed to climb up inside of it, which we're gonna do in just a second. So if you come to the Maritime Museum of Louisiana, take the opportunity, check this out in person up close. So as you can see, it's very cramped and confined spaces inside this submarine and is even today with the World War II submarines that you can visit and modern submarines. But it, back at the beginning, it was even more so than what we're seeing in this replica. This partition wouldn't have been here. You would have had a crankshaft running the length of the, of the boat, and she had a crew of three, and they would have been sitting on a bench like this, cranking back and forth, just turning that propeller, getting forward and backward movement. Now, if you're the slightest bit claustrophobic, this is not for you because this crankshaft is gonna keep you from being able to move very much and you're in a hot metal tube. You're in a metal coffin and you're underwater. The slightest thing goes wrong, you're dead as was proved by the crew, first two crews of the Hunley. Uh, this was not for the faint of heart. And on top of that, it's dark in here you would have had minimal lighting, maybe from candles, maybe from an oil lantern, uh, but you're working in a very dim twilight and it's getting harder to breathe the longer you're going because you don't have refreshers like the new submarines do. You don't have a snorkel like the World War II submarines had. You have carbon dioxide coming from your lighting system that's making it harder to breathe. This was not a fun job. Well, Tim, you're still alive. I'm glad you made it out okay. I did make it out. That's very, very tight confines there. Jenny, thank you so much for letting us come and see this replica and learn a little bit more about Pioneer. Uh, one last plug for your museum. Where are you? Who are you? We are the Maritime Museum of Louisiana, and we're located in Madisonville, which is on the North Shore, north of the city of New Orleans. So come see us. We're open Wednesday through Saturday, 1 to 4. made a little side trip. We saw the Pioneer replica. Uh, so we know this isn't the Pioneer. Of course, they didn't know that back then. Um, from 1878 moving forward, what happens with the sub? Well, this submarine, when it was excavated, they believed it was the Pioneer uh, because the Pioneer was also made near New Orleans um, by three famous engineers. But this was moved to an amusement park to be displayed there. Then it was moved to Camp Nichols. Um, but then it was donated to the Louisiana State Museum System in the 1940s. And it was in about the 1960s that the origins of the submarine started to be debated. And a lot of research papers were written about what it could possibly be. Perhaps it wasn't the pioneer started to be questioned. And then by 1990s, they found some archives in the National Archives. They found the drawings of the pioneer. So that closed the debate on what it was not, um, but still a mystery about what it is. Could have been a prototype, could have been um, sank before it was ever used. Uh, we don't know.
So it's still a mystery submarine. Still a mystery submarine. <laughs> okay. And all of the the discovery of the paperwork proving it wasn't Pioneer comes about because of raising the Hunley and Clive Cusler's research, if I understand correctly. Oh, wow, yes. Yeah. Okay. So Annie, years ago, attending Mardi Gras, I believe I saw this very boat sitting underneath the uh, arcade at the Presbyter. That's correct. And if I remember correctly, they were having a lot of problems with their, with their conservation because they had poured concrete in. Yes. <laughs> so what have y'all done to get her looking this good? Well, when the museum here opened, Capitol Park Museum opened in 2006, um, they started conservation treatment on an object that so they had to remove old stabilization <laughs> stabilization repairs that had been done, such as pouring concrete in it to stabilize it and anchor it and um, patch up any holes. So they had to start by removing any uh, past additions that had been put. So they did things like that. They took out the concrete. They put it through a system called electrolysis, which is where um, they remove rust and accretions by using electric electricity and water. Um, I believe the conservation guy's name was Dave. Um, they <laughs> repaired it by putting it through electrolysis, removing the accretions, um, putting a wax and um, a protective finish on it so that it could look like the original iron, and then, of course, replacing the pieces that had gone missing at some point between the Civil War and 1878. Uh, such as the propeller or the fins, part of fins were still there, so they had to uh, build out the rest of the fin based on you know the shape as they understood it from drawings and similar uh, submarines that we have from the time, uh, from drawings of that, and then uh, patch the holes and put it on display here. It's amazing. It really is amazing. And if you have not seen this submarine, this submersible, I highly recommend you make the trip to Baton Rouge because if we we don't know when the submarine was built but if circumstantial evidence adds up she very possibly predates the hunley uh, in fact it very likely would predate the hunley so make the trip to baton rouge come see the submarine and obviously she's not a threat to kid we investigate all <laughs> submersible contacts that might be a threat to kid but she's not going in the water anytime soon no no we're going to keep her here for everyone to come see awesome Annie, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you, Tim. It. So let's do a quick recap. Here are the known facts. In late 1861, McClintock, Watson, and Hunley lay down the keel for the Pioneer and start constructing the submarine. The submarine is launched in February of 1862, and testing starts in the Mississippi River and Lake Pontchartrain, at which point Pioneer is able to sink a schooner and a couple of barges. So satisfied that their invention works, the three take and go to the Confederate government and get a letter of mark, allowing them to pry on Union shipping. That's in March of 1862. In April of 1862, the Union fleet moves up river. They're no longer blockading, they're attacking. And they bombard Fort St. Philip and Fort Jackson, bypass them, and continue on to New Orleans, at which point everybody is trying to get out of the city. The trio take and sink Pioneer in the New Basin Canal and then head to Mobile where they'll eventually build another submarine. That one will be lost and they'll eventually build the Hunley. And we know all the history around the Hunley in Charleston Bay in 1864. So Pioneer has been sunk. At some point, the Bayou St. John submarine is launched and built, but we don't know where, we don't know when, but it is discovered at the confluence of Bayou St. John and uh, Lake Pontchartrain in 1878. And that's where the mystery begins. So this mystery submarine lies abandoned on the banks of Bayou St. John for a couple of years. And in 1880, it's displayed at the Spanish Fort Resort and Amusement Park on the western shore of Bayou St. John. And it's right there where a lot of people first become aware of the submarine. It stays at the amusement park at the resort until 1908. And in 1908, it is moved across the bayou to the eastern shore and displayed at the old soldier's home of Louisiana. 
also known as Camp Nichols, at 1700 Moss Street near Esplanade Avenue. And it's important for folks to note when they're studying New Orleans history that this is not the same Camp Nichols as the World War I training camp known as Camp Nichols. That Camp Nichols was actually located on City Park grounds directly across the bayou from where uh, the veterans home was. So very confusing, two Camp Nichols directly across from each other, one on the eastern side, one on the western side. So the submarine stays at the veterans home on the eastern shore until 1942. In 1942, it is acquired by the Louisiana State Museum and displayed in and around Jackson Square. And around 1953, it was displayed in a weaponry display in the Pontalba building, the Pontalba apartments that bordered Jackson Square. And from 57 until 1998, the Bayou St. John submarine moves into a covered display in the arcade of the Presbyter, right beside Jackson Square. Now we shift gears and locations. Author and historian Clive Cussler and his naval archaeology team discovered the wreck of the H.L. Hunley in Charleston Bay, South Carolina, in May of 1995. Now they want to raise this, this artifact, this very important piece of naval history, but they don't want to mess it up. So Hunley project historian Mark Reagan goes to the National Archives and he's researching, trying to find any bit of information that they can pull up about the Hunley. And in his investigations, he discovers some articles about the Pioneer. Remember, the same team that built the Hunley built the Pioneer first. And some of these are newspaper articles, some of them are drawings. And this is where we begin to find out that these are not the same two submarines. What Reagan discovers is that the Pioneer was actually discovered in the New Basin Canal in 1862 and raised. This has never come to light before. A federal team of experts were dispatched to examine her. Rear Admiral George W. Baird, U.S. Navy, later claims to have assisted as a member of this team in making measurements and mechanical drawings. And these drawings are presented to fleet engineer William Schock, who sends them on to Washington, D.C. for further study. Now, a little bit later, Ensign David M. Stouffer, also of the Navy, makes a detailed sketch of Pioneer still lying on the bank of the New Basin Canal in 1865. Now, Schock's drawings that he sent up to D.C. are mechanical drawings. They don't really give you a view of, of, of what the submarine looked like other than just the basic shape. It's mechanical. It's showing how it worked. Stouffer's drawings are more artistic and He's going around sketching forts and, and, and parapets and anything military related, and he gives us a really good idea of what Pioneer looked like. So now we know this submarine that has sat around in Louisiana for all these years is definitely not the Pioneer. Pioneer actually looks very similar to the Hunley. But Reagan ran across something more. He ran across newspaper clippings. And in these newspaper clippings, he finds a morning edition of the New Orleans Picune, the forerunner of the Times Picune, from February 15, 1868. And this morning edition reports a torpedo boat, which was built in this city during the war, is to be sold at public auction today by the United States authorities. The boat was sunk in the canal about the time of the occupation of the city by the federal forces in 1862. It was built as an experiment and was never fully perfected and is only valuable now for the machinery and the iron which is in and about it. Now, an afternoon edition on the same day of the paper reports that the sub was sold at auction 
for $43. And in today's dollars, that would be about $1,000. So Reagan's research, these newspaper clippings that he's finding, give us a few clues as to what the Bayou St. John submarine actually is. There's one picture of it from the time that it was at the veteran's home uh, from the Sunday Star of Washington, D.C., September 7, 1924. Shows an old Confederate veteran next to it, probably a veteran that lived at the home. The caption, though, reads a little confusing. Uh, it makes it seem as if he was a member of the subcrew, but he really wasn't. He was a member of the 5th Louisiana Infantry, so that can get confusing and throw people off. But there is another clipping, and it's from the Sun newspaper from New York, March 14th of 1915, and it's talking about how submarines will win the wars of the future, and this is during World War I. And there's a photograph of the Bayou St. John submarine in historical context with other old submarines and newer stuff being developed. The caption says that this is a Confederate submarine driven by hand power, and the crew of Negroes were drowned when the boat was given an experimental submergence. Now, that in itself doesn't, you know, who knows where that came from. But in digging further, Reagan found more clues to this mystery, and one is from fleet engineer Schock, who we mentioned earlier, when he wrote to Gustavus Fox, the assistant secretary of the U.S. Navy, and he described Schock's experience with the Pioneer investigation, but there's an anecdotal point that may actually relate not to Pioneer, but to a different the vessel, submarine. He says, some few weeks since, I had some duty calling me to a place down at the New Basin where I discovered a submarine machine. I embraced the first favorable opportunity and examined it, got its history, and had a drawing made of it, a tracing of which I send to you as a curiosity. The history of the machine seems is simply this. In the early part of Admiral Farragut's operations here, the gunboat New London was a perfect terror to the rebels in the lake. So it occurred to them if they could get a machine that would move underwater, they could succeed in securing a torpedo to the bottom of the ship, move off, touch the wires, and thus terminate their existence. They finally got the thing done, made a good job of it, got it overboard, and put two men in it. They were smothered to death. Now, since contemporary accounts of the pioneer never talk about an incident like this, is it possible that the fatalities that Shock heard about actually occurred in the Bayou St. John submarine? We have a newspaper clipping from 1915 that's talking about just that. So perhaps this submarine actually did make an attempt to dive but never came back up. It's unknown whether bodies were found in the submarine when it was dredged up. So again, more mystery. Here's a really interesting piece discovered by Reagan in his research. In June 1861, months before work even begins on the Pioneer, a New Yorker by the name of E.P. Doer traveled to New Orleans, and during his visit, he learns from a school teacher that a submersible is to be used against the Mississippi Squadron blockading the river, and he reports his findings to the Navy in Washington, D.C. when he returns. And here's what he says. She tells me that the rebels in New Orleans are constructing an infernal vessel to destroy the Brooklyn and any vessel blockading the mouth of the Mississippi. From her description, she is to be used as a projectile with a sharp iron or steel pointed prow to perforate the bottom of the vessel and then explode. Says it is being constructed by competent engineers. I put implicit reliance in the correctness of this information. Now, what does this mean? This means that if, if Doer is actually talking about the Bayou St. John submarine, if his source is correct, and she's talking about the Bayou St. John submarine, then it predates the Pioneer. So most historians tend to agree that the Bayou St. John submarine is probably a contemporary of the Pioneer. 
She was built in 1861, early 1862, maybe even a little earlier. Uh, the points for this, to support this, are as follows. First of all, they found the Pioneer very shortly after she was scuttled, sometime in 1862, no more than eight months after the Union arrived in town. And that means the troops were on the lookout for anything out of the ordinary, particularly anything military related. Now, in an occupied city during a state of war, the idea that you could pull all the iron together and the skill set together and build this submarine under the Union's noses, that is very, very slim chances indeed. Uh, they would have been looking for militarily strategic sites. They would have been looking at railroad depots, shipyards and docks, foundries, armories, anything, even trafficked, road, heavily trafficked roads. So bringing the submarine into the city after it's occupied by the Union, if it was built elsewhere, out of the, out of the question. Now, this would have been the case at all times, but particularly the first year of occupation when the city was under the military governorship of Major General Benjamin F. The Beast Butler. And he gets the Beast nickname because he was so stern, his administration was so strict and stern, and the laid-back, easygoing citizens of New Orleans really had an issue with him, uh, particularly the ladies, uh, but that's a whole other story for a whole other video. But with somebody that stern and that vigilant in charge, it's going to filter down to the troops on the ground level, and it's going to be hard to build something like this of this size uh, right under their noses. Now, even after the war was concluded and you're into Reconstruction, which runs from 1865 to 1877, Federal troops are still all through the state and particularly centered in New Orleans. So the idea of them building that submarine after the war really makes no sense. There's no purpose to it. There's no blockade anymore. So why even bother with that? Uh, they're also going to be still looking for insurrectionists, seditionists, anybody that's going to stir up trouble. So it really makes more sense that this submarine was built prior to the Union invasion of the city. So how did this case of mistaken identity come about between the Pioneer and the Bayou St. John submarine? Well, as we've heard already, the Pioneer was still laying around on shore, rusting away as late as 1868. And the newspaper articles that talked about her being auctioned off and then what the price was later, very small, uh, no pictures, nothing to attract the eye. And so you have to take in mind in the 19th century, literacy, being able to read, was much lower than it is in today's society. So it's very possible that all you had to spread the word that the pioneer was still around and that this thing that was found in 1878 are not the same things. Word of mouth was very limited as far as how it would travel. Uh, the greater population probably didn't even know that the pioneer had been found. So it's entirely understandable that 10 years later, when they raised the Bayou, sub, the Bayou St. John submarine, that people look and go, hey, that must be the Pioneer. And having the lack of knowledge that Pioneer was still around in 1868, and this thing popping up 10 years later, and then being displayed in the Spanish Fort Resort and Amusement Park, a heavily trafficked area, then in the old veterans home, then in Jackson Square, very heavily trafficked there, it makes sense that the memory of Pioneer being discovered might be lost and more and more people keep saying, this is that submarine, this is the Pioneer. And that becomes the common folklore and thus the case of mistaken identity. So if the Bayou St. John submarine was not built during Reconstruction, it was not built later in the war. If she was actually built prior to April of 1862, well, what does that mean? Well, that would mean that she would be older than H.L. Hunley. She would be older than the Intelligent Whale. She would be older than the Submarine Explorer. Three words, Submarine Explorer, which her wreck is laying down on the beaches in Panama's Pearl Islands. She would be older than the Holland One and the Finian Ram. 
In fact, the only thing that would be older than her, as far as submarines go, is the Brantager. And my apologies to our German viewers, I probably mangled that name. The Brantager was built in 1850, and she is the world's oldest existing submarine. Not the oldest built, not including wrecks that have never been raised, but one that you can walk up to and see with your eyes right there in front of you. She is the oldest one still around in one piece. Possibly the Bayou St. John submarine could be the second oldest submarine still in existence. And that means that she is a treasure a treasure, second oldest, possibly, in the world. And she's right here in Baton Rouge. She was potentially built here in Louisiana. What a treasure. Right down the street from the USS Kidd. I love this little submarine. We're never going to depth charge her. She is safe and sound, and you should totally come to Baton Rouge. Come see the Kidd, but definitely go see that little submarine. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Kid Keynotes. I really have. The USS Kid is a nonprofit educational organization that receives no regular state or federal funding on a regular basis. To book your next tour, to book your next overnight adventure, to access our teacher resources, or to support programming like this so that we can keep doing this sort of thing, click on the links down below and remember to like, to subscribe, and to share. Thanks for watching and happy holidays.